This is a short bite episode of Homeschool Together. Hello and welcome back to Homeschool Together. We say welcome back because we've been on hiatus for the last few weeks. <laughs> I know. We we had a little uh, time off for the holidays. We you know? did. And it was very nice. And we're, we're back in the studio. Thanks for and everybody for listening to our encore episodes. All, 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 the, all the encore episodes. Yeah, those are a couple of our favorites, our favorite uh, short bites and our, and thank our favorite you. main episodes. So. And, th- and thank you to all the new listeners and the listeners yeah, out there. We, we had our uh, second best month last month, the which was, ju- you know, a little bit down from the previous month, which was our best month. So we've, yeah, I'm still riding high on that hundred thousand uh, that we hit yeah, uh, exactly. last year. So I was pretty excited about that. And well, we keep on trucking. So just if you were worried we weren't coming back, we're back. Yeah, well, so we're back from the holidays, and we are flush with new games, and we, we wanted to do some a <laughs> couple short, things. couple short bites. I may have a loose voice today because I just got back from basketball practice and yelling at you know not yelling. <laughs> coaching and directing little uh first and second graders so it was a, it was a lot of fun but ariel we're going to talk about the hardest game we've ever played we've never won this game we've <laughs> we, played it four times we to- we've played it four times we're we've not talking about it. twilight imperium we're not talking about uh, uh, a pandemic we're not talking about any of these difficult games we're talking about disney's mickey and the beanstalk cooperative game this is a game from funko and yes. this is a two to four player game and it's a co-op and yep. it takes place it, it's based off the 1947 um yeah. cartoon with with mickey that, which by the way it's, if, on, it's on disney plus it's on disney plus if you want to find it you have to use the adult version not the kid version because i think in the, some of the other parts of that it's a it's a fun and fancy free actually so if you try to search for it because we wanted our kids to watch it before we actually played the game um, some of the other parts of it, I think they're smoking yeah. um, in the other stories, not in this part. So you have to like, you know, fast forward through a bit of it, but eventually you'll get to the Mickey and the Beanstalk. Yeah, it's called Fun and Fancy Free. That's what you search for. Right. That's how we found it. So anyways, the Mickey and the Beanstalk, this is a really old cartoon. Um, I have to confess when our kids watched it, I didn't watch it with them. So I hope there's nothing inappropriate in there. So, sorry if there is anything uh, in that, the I, giant I, one. But I did, yeah, I didn't know. I don't think there was. They were enough. watching it while we made there's, dinner. There was um, moments of starvation at the beginning that was oh, yeah, when it, they so, were slicing the bean super thin. Yeah. <laughs> so it's basically the yeah. residents of Happy Valley. Yeah. And, you know, it's the whole Jack and the Beanstalk story. Uh, so the way that this game is played, what's really cool about it, we got this co-op game for our kids for Christmas um, because it's neat. It has a large cardboard tree uh, or beanstalk. And then well, and at the, the top... Base, the base of the box is used as the Happy Valley, right? right? The base yeah. of the box is Happy Valley. And then you put this large cardboard uh, piece in there and at the top is the giant's table. And then to get back to Happy Valley, there is a plastic beanstalk mm-hmm. and the characters are actually plastic and you put them on there and they go down the beanstalk like a fireman pole like a a fireman pole that's so our kids really love the whole mechanic of you know when they go down the beanstalk that they get to put them on the thing and and the golden harp does that too so the whole point of this game is that there's food up at the giant's table the giant is up there and your characters have to get up there get food pieces and there's different plate there's different plate um, geometries there's like circular plates Mm -hmm. hexagonal and square plates and on whenever you get onto a space that say has a square plate, you will collect one, but it's a blind collection. So you don't know what's on the other side of the plate. Yeah. It could be steak. It could be potatoes. It could be whatever. And down in Happy Valley, the three farms you're trying to feed have different needs. So we could end up all getting steak or something. And there's yeah. only one steak down there. So we would have to keep trying for, yeah. you know, uh, the potatoes, for example. Yeah. So and what also happens is when you spin, it says, oh, here's how many spaces you can move up to this many spaces you can move. And this is the color. And that color is the the space on the table the giant is going to move to. Mm-hmm. If you happen to be in that space before you move, before you take your turn, uh, then the giant collects a piece of food. So yep. he doesn't steal from you. He just takes one and he puts it in this chest. There's eight spaces in the chest. And... Once those eight spaces are full, game over. Game over. And we have lost four times based on this. <laughs> yes. Um, because he has collected so there's a spot on the on the table where you can get a key and then there's another spot where there's a chest. So you can get a key, go to the chest, and then take food out of the chest. Yep. It's Inclu- only including the magic harp. Including the golden harp. Yeah. And you have to get that back down. So your goal is to 
get three tokens for each of the three farms in Happy Valley, so nine tokens total, and the Golden Harp down to Happy Valley before the giant fills up his chest. Yep. And we have never successfully done so. We've been really close. Close. The and last game we played, we were pretty close. Yes, we're pretty close. And I have to say, we have played all these games with our three-year-old. Yeah. So there is a little bit of, you know... I, we were not running our complete A team on this one because we didn't tell her what to do. She really does direct her own movements yeah. and sometimes they're, you know. So, um, but what I like about this game is one, it's co-op yep. um, and two, our three-year-old can play with us even it, if we do tend to lose a lot. It's not, yeah, it's not, it's not difficult that. <laughs> I don't that, think it's really that hard a yeah. game and I think that you could, you definitely could make it easier yeah. by giving yourself more like, chances you know well, they, after the giant they, they do they do full. they do have that wrinkle in the game that we haven't played that yet right that, that's true there is a there is the ability once you bring food to the farms you can get like a help token yeah um and, and that will help make the game a little bit easier so we can definitely we have not handicapped the game yet uh which is totally in the rules and we can do that because we really thought we we could do this without it and yeah. I, I think we're gonna need that playing I, with the three-year-old she's just like, like a wild card she is and and she but she, she understands how to play yep uh, and I think it's I think it's a really cute game. You know, it's got a spinner. You're just counting spaces. And you got it's this not on hard. Super sale too, right? I did. I got it on real good sale for for the holidays. Sub ten dollars or something, right? It was very affordable. I'm not sure what it normally runs for. I think it normally runs for like twenty bucks or under twenty bucks. It's not it's not super expensive, yeah. but I like it as a kids co op game mm-hmm. that has enough. Um, that's interesting tactilely C- for colors, us to play with our three year old. Colors, numbers, a little bit of strategy. Mm-hmm. Um, resource gathering. It has a lot of nice elements in there, but at a very easy pace. Right. It's something that's it's hard to find a game that we can play with our three-year-old that we can also play with our seven-year-old and she's kind of equally interested in it. Our seven-year-old is kind of graduating out of some of the kids' games and yeah. getting into playing games with us. I think she's starting to realize like, that's a kids' game. I want to play the adult one. Yeah, I yeah. think she does. But this is a game that she actually requests to play too. So yeah. I think it's it's good to kind of bridge that gap. You know, we're games our three-year-old can play are starting to be like uh, Yeti and the Spaghetti and, <laughs> you know, she can play just really you know, sneaky snacky squirrel games we've talked yeah. about on here that are super easy um and th- those are kind of not very interesting for our seven-year-old anymore yeah but this game still they both they both like it yeah. um in fact i actually played this with our three-year-old just by ourselves the other day because she enjoyed it so much so i think it's really good anything with disney is great and i think funko's got a whole line of disney games so um, this is the first one that we've gotten, but yep. I know that there are others that I, I think are kind of equally beautiful good. artwork. The the box front cover is really nice, and the the whole the whole you know a lot of times when you go three dimensional in a game like this, it can be a little rickety. It's very very you know stout and yeah, and, I think it is too. You know, feels like it's good quality materials, even though it's cardboard. It felt like heavy duty cardboard, and you know, it didn't didn't feel like it was going to fall down or if you bumped it. Yeah. You know, I think the three dimensional nature of it and then having the like kind of fireman pole thing, the, the kids just really dig it. They did. Um, and I really like it. So I think it's a great early co-op game that you can play. Um, definitely more advanced than our three-year-old. I would say probably five mm-hmm. and, and up would understand. I don't know what the game says on it, how, how, what it, what its target age is, but I think four, four plus. Oh, four plus. Yeah, I definitely. The, the little ones can definitely play it, even if they don't understand the full strategy. So I think this is nice because I think it'll have longevity. I could see our kids definitely being a little bit older and playing this with grandma and grandpa, yeah. things like that. So yep, yep. I think this will have a good shelf lifespan. Uh, we wanted to share it with you all. So that's Mickey and the Beanstalk from Funko Games. Thanks so much for joining us today and making us a part of your homeschool journey. Please engage with us on social media. Join our Homeschool Together podcast group on Facebook and find us at Homeschool Together Podcast on Instagram. We'd love to hear your feedback, questions, and recommendations. Until next time. Happy homeschooling!